Hello there, uh, it's Ilya and I think let's continue with my top 50 of all time. It's number 40 to number 31. You're going to hear about many cool games and without the further ado, let's just jump into it. Now, my number 40 is a racing game and I tend not to like racing games normally or just the, the theme of like or the aspect of racing is not really for me. But um, Steampunk Rally, and that's the game for my number 40, um, Steampunk Rally uh, is a really cool Euro-style racing game where you are building up your machine out of cards and you are placing dice on these cards, the machine parts, to activate them. And that's, that's a really cool part. It uh, becomes sort of an engine-building Euro-style mechanism uh, with card drafting, because at the beginning you're drafting these cards um, and then you decide either to uh, make them into resources or use them in, in your machine and build up your machine because a bigger, stronger machine means uh, a better, means, means basically better quality and uh, faster going on the track. Um, what's cool there is you need to um, be quite efficient with um, with the resources and building a machine because um, you can use the card either to get the resources which are dice and the dice you will need to use to activate the parts of the machine and when you're racing uh, you go through some uh, harsh um, tracks and mountains and so on and your machine will be ruined, will be destroyed at some point, you have to rebuild it. That's another really cool part of Steampunk Rally. Uh, the theme itself is steampunk, it's there, it's... I don't know, I, I, I like the theme, but it's not the strongest aspect of this game. So the mechanics themselves, like drafting, really a engine building Euro style mechanisms in there are what makes this game a really cool game. It plays up to eight players. I really recommend Steampunk Rally. Now, uh, number uh, 39 is a family style game, uh, which is based on Noah's Ark and it's Animals on Board. Animals on Board it's, is, is, is a really simple family style game where you have uh, either one choice or the other choice to do on your turn. What are you doing? You're basically trying to get animals on, on board on your ship and then score them at the end of the game. The caveat, like, uh, sorry, not the caveat, sorry, um, the neat aspect is that uh, you don't want to get the pairs of animals. Normally, Noah's Ark, you know, pairs of animals. You do not want to get the pairs of animals because at the end of the game, you have, if you have pairs of a particular type of animal, you will lose them. They will be discarded. You cannot score them. You want to get either an individual, um, an, uh, like individual animal, or you want to get more than two, like at least three um, of a particular type of animals. Then you will score uh, high points. And the cool aspect is about outguessing your opponent. Uh, at the beginning, you have a big group of animals, and on your turn, you can either the split split the group, or the groups depends if you're further into the game, or take the group. In order to take the group, you need food crates. Uh, you need to spend that many food crates as many uh, as as many animals you're gonna get from from the center. Uh, you're gonna get food crates by splitting. So that's sort of a circle, you know, it's, it's, you need to do that in order to, to get that. Uh, but sometimes like um, you want to split groups the way that you like, you want, you want particular animals, you split the group and you need uh, basically to risk and you are hoping that nobody else will get the animals that you want, but then somebody else gets, the, gets the, these animals that you really wanted. So it's sometimes like, oh, and then you have to have your poker face, like, no, I don't have to worry. I didn't want these animals in any way. So, but in your head, you're like, oh, why did he get the animals? And then you need to strategize and then you need to change the, your strategy, what animals you will get next and so on. It's, it's a really simple one, splitting or just taking animals on board. And then you will gonna score them 
the animals that are on your board. So that, that's it. That's the whole game. And it's a really fun game, really fast game. I really like the um, sort of a mental interaction between players. That's animals on board number 39. Number 38 is a game about farming. Me, farming. Oh no. Uh, to be honest, farming isn't my theme at all. And, um, but but this, this game is, is a different um, farming. You basically uh, buy seeds, you plant them, you water them and you harvest them. Watering is a really cool aspect of the game. And that's garden dice. Uh, we looked into, the, into this game before, thinking of it as a garden dice, which means it's a simple dice game. Nah, not our style. And then we looked into this game more and we figured out that it's a quite a thinky Euro style game with dice allocation uh, and not so many rules. So it's like a medium weight Euro and it just clicked, you know, and then uh, we, we got this game uh, from Kyle as a present. We got it with the uh, expansion, the extra cards, which give you some extra uh, opportunities for bigger combinations in the game. Some event cards will, will change uh, the course of the game and so on. But in Garden Dice, you're, yeah, you're rolling dice and then you are allocating them. Um, you're using them for different actions. And what I like about uh, this one is that even though you have a luck of dice, you can still do quite a lot of things and you can manipulate dice with sundial that that you will put out on the board. You're trying to... Uh, the board is common for everyone, which means that if I put the tile somewhere, you cannot put it there anymore, but you are trying sometimes to plant next to other players. And that's why. Uh, the thing is that uh, uh, this game has a mechanism of chain reaction. If I water my seed, I might water the seeds of my opponents that are next to my seed. And that means if my seed is a higher number, which will give me higher points at the end of the game, or let's say it's, it's really good for connection, uh, let's sorry, during the game, it will, it will give me higher points. It's a bigger vegetables that, uh, vegetable that I will harvest, water, whatever, bigger vegetable. Uh, then the lower number of vegetables that are around it will be watered as well or harvested as well. And doesn't matter if it's uh, you or your opponent, everyone will get it, you know? And that's really cool. Sometimes you want to plant your little vegetable, or let's say your little seed that will become a little vegetable, near opponent higher vegetables, bigger vegetables, in order for them to do the job for you. And that's a really cool part. We play it as a two-player game. It's not as interactive as a two-player game because you might get stuck in one corner, sort of, because of the dice and the other player may, will, may get stuck in the other corner and there is no interaction and you will not water each other's seeds and not harvest each other's vegetables. But with three and four players, I think the interaction is much more and that's what, what this game needs. So I would definitely play it as a three-player game or, or as a four-player game. And that's a um, really cool aspect of the game which makes the game skyrocket. There, it's rather simple, not aggressive interaction <laughs> that's really cool you do something for yourself you do something for your opponents as well at the same time so um, that's garden dice number 38 number 37 is an economy game but uh, in its simplest way and with a really silly childish artwork and when we looked at this game we first thought like oh, games for children you know and whatever uh, but it's happy peaks and happy peaks has this cute um, cube-shaped animals, the drawings, and it looks like a, another yellow, it's yellow um, production, it's another yellow children series game. Uh, but uh, when uh, people starting, uh, started raving about it and telling that it's, oh, it's a cool economy game, we're like, um, what, really? I'm not into economy games, but I thought I should try this one. And Alina likes economy games, so um, we got this game, we uh, tried this game, and this game is really cool. Uh, it has so simple uh, mechanisms, so simple rule book, rules and actions, 
But on the other hand, it's a finky game. The, the aspect of economy is that you want to get something low and sell high and get the most money at the end of the game. Um, the other cool aspect is that um, you will turn over the card each turn, which determines the number of actions, uh, action points for, e for each action. And then you will simultaneously select your actions. For example, there is a um, like buy peaks action, let's say there's buy peaks action, and it gives 10 action points. Uh, there is four players of us, we reveal it, and three of the players will reveal by a peak action, which means that we need to split these 10 action points between us. If I would be the only one to choose that action, I would get all 10 points that I can spend on my turn. So you want to outguess your opponents and try to get uh, beneficial actions uh, that will give you the most action points that you can get the most out of each turn, you know? On the other hand, if you're thinking that, huh, he doesn't need that action really, so I will pick that because I think he and he, they, they don't need that action. I will get all action points for myself. They are thinking like, huh, I see he needs this action quite, quite much. I can benefit from that action as well and I will ruin his plan. Let's do that, you know. There's that layer of outguessing which is really cool. What I like about many games, um, outguessing is one of my favorite mental mechanics in board games. So, um, that's, uh, that's Happy Peaks. That's my number 37. Number 36 is uh, another, look, it's not economy type, but it's a Euro game. It's a, I would say it's a classical Euro game and it's Gold West. Uh, Gold West sorry. Um, it's a TMG title, Tasty Mr. Games, uh, which has a rather abstract theme of mining gold or whatever, exploring the island, but it's all basically about points and resources. It's a point salad game. But it has a cool Mancala aspect where you have crates going from down to up. And Mancala aspect is whether you, you, have, you pick one crate where you take the goods from and then you will go higher. You have to drop uh, one cube, one resource in each crate before you reach the top. And at the top, the resources that will be left will be for you to use during your turn. And then you can use resources to uh, send them on, on the transport. And basically there's a track for the truck, track for the truck. <laughs> really cool. uh, and you will advance it to get extra points. That's it. Um, you will build settlements on the map. Uh, and building settlement, basically you, you get, you get uh, the tokens, which are resources. You will convert them into resources. And you will put the settlements down. This is for the area majority, area control. You will get uh, the most points for, for your biggest chain of settlements that are basically not cut ch chain of settlements. You can also get majority in different lands. This is the forest, this is the mountain, this is the plains. Uh, if, you get, if you have the majority in each, then you will get the most points. The second place will get the second most points and so on. It's all about the point side, but it's a really clever, uh, rather simple rules. Uh, it's a really clever classical Euro game, which plays quite fast and plays well with two players, with three players, with four players. It just plays well. Uh, I, I don't know, it's, it's like a butter sort of, you know, it's, it's sliding nicely. And I like that quite much. It's, there's not much to say about this game. It, he's a point salad but he points out in a most beautiful way. So that's uh, Gold West, number 36. Number 35 is a game that has basically replaced another game, and that's Champions of Midgard. And Champions of Midgard has replaced Lords of Waterdeep for us. Lords of Waterdeep is a cool game, and with expansion it gets a little bit better, but it's still cubes, uh, cubes converting, uh, cubes pushing cubes, and whatever, it's just... Uh, trying to get cubes and then trying to convert them into points. That's it. In Champions of Midgard, you feel more of that theme, although it's not a really thematic game. It's a Viking themed uh, Champions of Midgard, and you get uh, you basically get different resources like a worker placement, just 
put uh, your meeple on, on a spot, you're going to get the benefit from there. It's the simplest way of worker placements. But you also have an aspect of uh, Viking warriors. Viking warriors are dice. Uh, dice are basically also like resources. You go to the spot and you will get uh, the dice. These are resources. Or let's say these are Viking warriors. You can, and then you can go uh, on raids to battle, uh, to battle monsters. And you will get glory points, basically the victory points of the game. These are the glory points. You, you will go and battle monsters. So, and for that, when, when you reach the monster, you need, first you need to go on the boat. You need to load, the boat has capacity. You need to load as many like warriors as there's capacity or as many as you want there until full capacity. You also need to load food on the boat because when you travel, the warriors wants to, want to eat food, which is thematic, you know? Then you might, uh, then an event might occur before you reach the monster, a storm or something, you will lose a warrior, or something like that. And then you will fight the warrior, just roll dice and you're trying to get um, attack symbols. Um, so, which is really cool. And the, I like how the cheaper warriors, which are white, uh, have less attack, but they have defense shields. Uh, the black warriors, which are the coolest warriors with a lot of attack, you know, with a two attack symbols on one side already, you know, it's, it's quite strong. They don't have any defense, so they are all out attackers, but they don't have any defense. And you will attack monsters, you're trying to defeat them. Sometimes you get unlucky, and I understand that some people might not like the uh, random aspect where you can roll your dice just badly. Um, that's, that's the day, you know, it's sometimes, sometimes it happens, but you can mitigate this luck with tokens. So I, I don't care about this random, you know, it just feels cool, you know. And the other tokens uh, where you go, like, if one person, uh, if nobody goes to defeat the troll, the people will blame you, you will get these blame tokens, which are negative points in the game. If, for example, I have a blame token, I will go and defeat the troll on my turn. I can give this blame token to another player because I am a hero. I defeated the troll, but you didn't. Here you go. You're going to get negative points. People are not satisfied with you. You're not a good Viking, you know, and that's really cool. So Champions of Midgard is a rather simple worker placement, but with cool thematic aspects and just a, like a clean design. So that's Champions of Midgard number 35. Number 34 is a like a heist game. Uh, it's from a one-man one team. Uh, it's designer Team Fowers and it's uh, Burgle Brothers. And I, I saw this game in Kickstarter. I didn't really believe in this game, to be honest. I don't know why. It didn't look as attractive as uh, it looked. On, on when we set up the game, when we got the game, when we set up the game, then it looked much better on the table. But um, uh, this game didn't attract me in Kickstarter. The theme was, oh, it's cool, a heist, but it didn't attract me as well. But uh, once we played it with our friend Kyle in the board game camp, and he brought this game uh, with him, uh, it clicked with us. Uh, this game is about you as, as thieves uh, going through three different floors trying to crack saves. There, the cracking save is a rather abstract aspect of the game, but overall the game is quite thematic. You're trying to crack save, saves and then you're trying to get the items out of safe and um, escape with these items on the roof and from there you can basically escape by the helicopter or whatever. Uh, the game ends when you escape on the roof. So that's, that's the thing. Um, the coolest part is that it's puzzly. It's a cooperative game where you're thieves and the, um, let's say the, the computerized, the, uh, how, how, how you call it, uh, AI, yeah, artificial intelligence, is, are, the, are the guards. And the guards move according to the cards, but they move uh, but, but when th there is a contradiction between like moving towards you or moving towards a room that it was supposed to move, it will go towards you. And it's a puzzly thing, you know? If you move on the floor, then the guard will move on your floor. If you don't, if nobody moves on that floor, guard will stay in space or sort of it's, you don't know where he is, you know, he doesn't move. 
Sometimes you get some really cool items that you um, from from I mean from the from the safes from the from the vaults. You get some cool items. Sometimes you get items that are so annoying. Like, for example, um, you can get um, I don't I don't really remember what you can get. But some items are like heavy items. You need to carry them. You cannot walk too fast anymore, and so on. So. It's a game about heist. There's not much I can tell you about this game. You just need to play it. You will. There are different tiles, different rooms, basically that you will go through, and sometimes you get stuck in the room. You need to roll a particular number of dice or whatever to get out of the room. Sometimes you will trigger alarms, and then alarms will be triggered, and then the guard will move faster. He will run towards you, and so on. And you want to run away and. You want to hide and so on. So it's 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 a lot of cool of that the heist movie aspect in this game. So that's Burgle Brothers number thirty four. Uh, number thirty three is another TMG title, another game that's quite, I would say quite expensive for what it is in in the European Union. I would I would love TMG to make their games in European Union and cheaper, but I don't know how to do that. It's I'm I'm not into business, so I don't know. What makes it so pricey in European Union? Except, of course, the uh, the VAT, the taxes are quite higher. But um, and the game is Scoville, and um, this game is about planting peppers, farming theme again. But it's another exception of farming theme where I really like it. I like. I like the production of the game quite much. I like the looks of the game, planting peppers and different peppers, and they are different height peppers. And you basically what you're trying to do, you're trying to crossbreed peppers to get new colors of peppers. And you're basically, it's it's like in lots of water deeper, you are converting cubes into victory points. Here is basically the same. You are sort of selling peppers. Uh, for the re or you are you are preparing the recipes of different I don't know pepper sauces or something like that or you're selling peppers or so, and so on. You're trying to get points. You're trying to get combinations of different color peppers to get particular cards that will give you particular uh, points. That's basically it. And the whole game is rather simple. What I like about this one is that the board, as in for example, garden dice, the board is common as well. And if you plant peppers somewhere, the other players can benefit from them as well. And you, it, that's, that's that kind of um, Euro-style interaction between players, where I want to plant this pepper here, but I don't want you to use this pepper, because I it got me a lot of turns to get this pepper, you know. And so that that's really cool. And the aspect of should I plant this pepper or should I hold uh, to this pepper and use it for the recipe to get um, bigger points? Oh, but, but sometimes you, you need to use that particular pepper because in order to breed another new pepper you need that and that pepper and you always go into bigger, bigger combinations until you get this uh, coolest pepper, the phantom pepper. And the phantom peppers are really expensive, you know. So. That's, that's basically the whole game. You're trying, you're planting peppers and you are harvesting them and the mechanism of, of these um, farmers going through and picking the crossbreedings of different peppers is really cool. I just like it a lot and we made a, I think, yeah, yeah, we made a blender segment for, for Scoville. So go check it out on our channel. It's a really cool game. Um, that's Scoville, number 33. Number 32 is a small cheat. It's two games, but you will understand me because everyone does the same. If almost every reviewer does the same. And it's King of Tokyo and King of New York. These games are basically the same. Uh, I like... I don't know what I like more. If I like King of New York, King of Tokyo more, that's why I cannot really put them like... I like them the same. Sometimes I, I'm in a mood of uh, a little bit more difficult game, which is King of New York, where you have uh, different um, lands where you can go on. You have buildings and army. Basically, buildings, when you destroy buildings, you just get these bonuses. But then the army will go after you. 
that's a more complex game or sometimes when I want, want it simpler or I want to show something really simple to a non-gamer than King of Tokyo. And it's really simple to explain. King of Tokyo is about rolling dice, getting particular symbols and using those symbols to either get your life points back, to attack, uh, to get power. With the power you can buy all sorts of cool uh, power cards which will basically customize your own monster. First you, you, you will be like a monster, that's it. You, you have your standee, that's it. There's no differentiation between, except the pictures, between the monsters. But as you get these cards, you become sort of an individual. You have these powers that the others don't have. And that's really cool. But it all goes around what? Just rolling dice, you know? Simple dice. We're not into dice games anymore, but King of Tokyo is an exception. It's a really cool game. You roll dice, you solve your symbols. You, you can re-roll dice, basically like Yahtzee mechanism there. Uh, the expansions, uh, Power Up and Halloween. Halloween is not that necessary, although I like the costumes very much there. Uh, the Power power Up expansion is necessary. There you can get an uh, individual deck uh, of cards for each monster. So each monster begins as, uh, as sort of a specialized monster. And there is Power Up expansion coming for King of New York as well. That's really cool. We're going to pick it up in Essen. Um, yeah, that's... The expansions, I would say, are essential and the game itself is really simple. It's a gateway style Yeti, uh, Yeti game, so gateway style game with Yeti mechanism and cool theme of monsters like Godzilla and so on, like Godzilla type monsters invading uh, the Tokyo and so on. So that's King of Tokyo. I really recommend this game to everyone, but play it with rather more players like at least four players of like that, then you will get the best out of it. So that's uh, number 32, King of Tokyo or King of New York. And the last one for today is uh, number 31. And it's another TMG title. Uh, <laughs> today is a TMG day. Happy TMG day, everyone. Um, this game struck me with its unique approach to uh, worker placement, at least in my opinion. And that's Steamworks. In Steamworks, uh, which is a steampunk setting, which I didn't like before, but now I like it much, much more. In Steampunk work, uh, sorry, Steampunk work, Steamworks, uh, you create worker spots. And when you create them, everybody will be able to use them. I, I like that quite much. So you start with a you, you just start with something. But as you get more tiles, you connect these tiles to power plants and then you create worker spots that give you extra bonuses, victory points, coins or whatever. And you create these small, uh, small worker spots in front of you, but your opponent can use them if he, of course, will pay you a coin or something like that. You know, it's, it's, it's not that expensive. You pay you something to, to get the benefit of your machines, but you can go on his machines as well. And I really like how you build from something really tiny to something really cool where right now I don't really have some, uh, anything in front of me, you know, and then late in the turn I have this option and this option, that option, and option from my opponent as well. That's really cool and um, you can play with uh, basic um, uh, characters or you can play with advanced characters which have all different starting uh, tiles uh, to use which is really cool. You need to, uh, you need to connect, there are different uh, power plants basically, the steam, electricity and the third one I don't remember but basically uh, there are different power plants and you need to get uh, the connections right between the tiles, you know, the, because a particular tile will need a steam power, that particular tile will need a electricity tile, that's really cool, I like it quite much. That's Steamworks where you basically build up your engine in a different way, it's not like an engine building game completely, so I like it quite much and I want to play it more, so I hope I will play it soon. So that's it for today. Sorry for even more babbling, 
but I really wanted to talk about all these cool games and later you will hear about my 3221 and then 2211 and then we'll go to my ultimate top 10 there are so many cool games that I still want to talk about <laughs> I just cannot wait uh, for you to hear about them so till next time let's hope it'll be really soon thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to comment go to our guild with reviews I always put all the links in the uh, description in every video. You can find uh, all the information about us under the description of every video we put out. So please go and create threads in our guild or comment under the YouTube video. Wherever you want, say hi in Twitter, in Instagram, everywhere. So see you then. Bye bye.